Hello and welcome to this Train Sim TV video, this is Mark. Today we're taking a look at Railways of Devon and Cornwall version 10 for Train Simulator 2020. This route is available from Vulcan Productions and now on ThompsonSim.com and is developed by the High Speed Tracks team. Version 10 of this long running route adds the fantastically, stunningly beautiful line from Liscard down to Lou, uh, also known as the Lou Valley Branch Line. And we're going to take a trip along this line in this video. Uh, this is the main thing that's been added into version 10 of this route. And for those who love a Great Western branch line, this is a really nice one to go for. It's uh, they got pretty much everything in terms of scenery, it's, it's just beautiful. So we're at Liscard here. Uh, interesting layout at Liscard for those, and many will know it already, I'm sure, but we're currently at right angles to the main line. So the main London to Penzance main line goes past on the uh, right angles to this branch line platform. There is a curve that goes around here also, which is used by freight trains such as the cement to um, used to go to Westby, I'm not sure where it goes these days, but the cement train and they also used to be used by Trinaclay trains that used to go down to um, Bangor. Sent Blazer. So we're going to take a trip down the branch from here at Liscard to Lou. Lou is on the coast, whereas Liscard is about nine miles up the valley. Uh, it's quite high above the actual valley floor as well. So we're just moving out of the platform now here at Liscard. This is platform three, obviously the other two are, are one and two. And we'll be creating a morning service to Lou. This is just a free room that I've set up. There is a couple of scenarios that come with the route that you can obviously use. For the sake of the video we've already got the token so we're going to obviously ignore that little sign there. So in terms of what you get with the uh, new version of the route, you get this bit which is the section from Liscard down to Coombe Junction which is where there's an interesting little reversal takes place from there and then you head along this the Lou Valley branch line to Lou. It's eight and three quarter miles of new track in the route. Although the section to Coombe Junction was already in before, uh, there's obviously the section from Coombe Junction down to Lou itself is completely new in terms of scenery. So we're just easing out of the station area. It's a five mile an hour limit in here, so it's really slow. I love the detail in here with the uh, check rail and everything. And from here, it's a really steep drop down towards Coombe Junction because we've got to go right underneath. We go around a huge hairpin curve, which is here, a large horseshoe in the line. And we actually go back under the Great Western Main Line. So the limit goes up to 25 miles an hour here. You don't expect to be going any high speeds on this line. I mean, it is a, a very rural, slow branch line. So we're on a 1 in 66 dropping gradient already. 1 in 56, and it goes to uh, steeper than 1 in 50. 1 in 49 is the current gradient. And we're on a Great Western Railway class 150 slash 2, number 150, 244. As you can see, you don't need to give much on the power there to get going down this hill. There's a good flash coming up in the other direction. So we're now starting the long horseshoe curve. Blue sign on the left indicates that the AWS ramp that we're about to go over. It indicates that that ramp applies in the other direction, that's for the distant board on the approach to Liscard. So that's blue sign tells us that the AWS ramp, although the horn sounds, it isn't applicable to us. Having to get on the brakes quite a lot coming down here. 1 in 59 at the moment. And we're just starting to come off the curve slowly now. The road we've gone under there a couple of times I believe is the A38 trunk road. Gradient now steep into 1 in 36 and then 1 in 40. And you can just see in the distance the viaduct that we're going to go under 
which carries the Great Western Main Line overhead. And obviously in this route you get all the scenery from here at Liscard, you can go all the way up to Tiverton, so it's a really nice one that you can do. As I said, the route's been developed by Simon Spur and his team at High Speed Tracks. As I'm sure people that have seen these videos before will know it's one of the best routes in train sim, particularly for some of the detail on the scene of it, it's beautiful. So you can see on the map at the bottom there, 0.8 miles to Coombe Junction, number one ground frame. Coombe Junction station itself only gets served by a couple of trains a day I believe. Most of them actually reverse at the direct at the crossover which we'll come to where the junction is. Where the ground frame is and the, the guard gets out there and actually operates the ground frame from what I remember. Or certainly the last time I went. Admittedly, the last time I actually went on a Unit 2 it was about 1999 or something. <laughs> the only other time I've been since was on a rail tour about 10 years ago, something like that. So we now curve sharply, sharply to the right, one in 47 gradient at the minute, we curve sharply to the right and then we go through a cutting before we come down the embankment towards Coombe Junction. We've got a distant board here for the junction itself. One in 38 gradient. Always a good idea to remember to change the points. So we're going to stop here with change ends, I'm just going to take a little fly around here for you, before we do. So obviously down here you got Coombe Junction Station. And this is a lovely little halt. One of the least used stations in Britain actually a few years ago, although now it's actually, I'm just looking at the figures now, it's actually risen a little bit. It went from 26 passengers in 2014, 15, 2018, 19, it actually managed 204 passengers, which is pretty decent actually, for such a small station. Because as I said, I think a lot of the trains actually terminate, uh, turn around there where we are, rather than actually coming down here, although it's not entirely clear. Are these signs that have been added in? Um, I'm not sure who developed the other assets that have been included, such as shelter, but I know that the signs here uh, and at the other stations and the totems and stuff like that have been created by Rob Skipworth. Uh, he's done some lovely little posters and stuff, which is really nice. Uh, specific to the actual station as well, which has been good of him. But you got this footpath here, this is what links the station to the little crossing. There's a tiny little lane comes down here, I've driven that before in real life. It's a really narrow lane. So we'll sort the cab out now. Just uh, checking that the lights are right. Take the master key out. Change ends.
And that's us all ready to go. So we need to change the points to which are directly in front of us, which I've just changed now. And in real life, there's a ground frame just here. In this little hut. That's actually there, look. You can actually see the lever move, which is really cool. And that's how they change the points. There's no actual signalling staff down here, I don't think. It's uh, done by a train crew, as far as I know. At least it was when I went, as I said. So we now head off down the valley. So again the 25 mile an hour limit continues, uh, it drops to 10 mile an hour for a crossing I think in a little bit. A thousand hour, I think what the operation is there is that I should have actually stopped again at the stop board that we just passed uh, to actually change the points back, which I'm going to do now behind the train so I can recreate the uh, situation when you come up to the stop board on the return. So we're just coming up to our first little crossing here. There's quite a lot of really small level crossings on this route. to cross him. Beautiful detail. Really nicely done. I love the little stream down the side as well. Limit actually increases to 40 mile an hour coming up. The next first stop for us will be St. Keynes Wishing More Hall. On the approach to St. Kim Wishing Well Hall. We'll have a quick stop at the stations en route. Although they are all really minor. Pretty much all the traffic on this route actually uh, is passengers going right through to Lou. Hardly anyone really gets off at these stations by comparison. Now you will probably find you struggle a little bit to get the doors open at some of these stations in TS because the platforms are so small. 
I'm not currently getting any doors to open there. Again, custom signage. Which has been put in by Rob Skipworth. Custom shelter and other bits and bobs as well that's been made. So this is our first stop. And we've got the lovely, really lovely part of the, the branch to go yet. This section of the line is really densely treed. It opens out quite a lot as we get further along where we join the actual river estuary. It widens out and it's really, really stunning along that section. We're just following the contours of the valley at the minute in terms of gradients. It's sort of broadly downhill, generally speaking, but um, undergelates a little bit around this part. Certainly a beautiful part of the world, such a stunning area of Cornwall, it's really tucked away. Lou itself is it was a fishing village, it's now quite a, a nice tourist destination to be honest. And that's probably where most of the traffic these days comes from, I would suspect. Although it is quite a big town as well in its own right, which I imagine does prefer to produce uh, some commuter traffic. Nice section of houses there, and a good little bridge over the road as well, over the railway. This is just before we come to our next stop at Causeland. I love the little scenes that you can get on this line, like here. Just peeking through the trees and you've got the uh, little stream there. You sort of see as you go along that the valley is widening very gradually and then it suddenly opens out as you get around those curves in the distance. I'm just stopping at Corsland now which is on a really sharp curve. Again, some nice detail going on. Another really small crossing. This one's a farm crossing. There's even put the little bridge in a salmon there over the uh, stream.
I love the detail, even though you can't see there's these little this little pond and stuff, even though you can't really see it from the railway, it's just behind those trees there. You just sort of get a glimpse if you're on a passenger view or whatever. You'll get a slight glimpse and that's the sort of thing I like. FPS wise it's not too bad, it's 26. Which considering all the 3D trees and stuff, that's not too bad really. Might be a bit like it for some people if you're on a lower spec machine I suppose. It's actually been to 45, 50 now, so I think it was loading a tile at that point. Which for me is obviously it's fine. I don't know how it'll be for other people, but it is quite a demanding route just because of all the vegetation and stuff going on. Just over half a mile now till we get to Sam Place. And that'll be our next stop. I love that. That's kit bashing at its best. I don't know if I'd even have the forethought to actually think that idea up. He's actually put, I think there's probably four bridges in use here, using the scale tool to. Uh, make an arch on both sides so the streams can get down both sides. I think that's really a really novel idea. You get a good screenshot of that as well. You sort of see, like I said, the valley's now opening out a little bit, getting a little bit wider on both sides. We're just coming up into Sam Place now. Oh, I've stopped a little bit short there, so obviously the door hasn't opened, but you'd have to pull right up to the end. Again, this is, as I said, this custom signage. The shelter itself is custom as well. That's been made by Callum Green, and the signage by Rob Skipworth. People walking through concrete there, but it's one of those things you can't really avoid unless you start to uh, put in markers and stuff in. I love the detail, like the road look of the chevrons and stuff like that. It's a really good eye for detail. Look at that scene. That's beautiful. Not quite sure why everyone's gathering there. There must be an interest point or something in place there. Really beautiful, the road sort of uh, alongside the railway. And you can see the valley now, it is getting quite wide. And we'll soon be out onto the actual estuary. 
And this is the Lou East River that we're following. Quite a bit of marshland on this area. Coming up to Terrace in a moment, that's a really interesting little spot where the line actually gets there, the road actually gets flooded but because it actually crosses the river estuary and at high tide and stuff like that it gets flooded quite easily. Look at this, it's beautiful, it just uh, it sort of teases you as you're going along as it opens out. Now we are on to the estuary section. I'll take a stop in a minute when we get to this crossing and we'll have a look around the uh, site. There's a stop board on this crossing because it's ungated and it's on a very sharp curve. So you can actually see how much detail Simon's gone into it and it's fantastic. So you've got the river bridge itself is actually here, but when it's really high tide, the water obviously goes over the causeway. The, when it does, there's actually these raised boards here, which must have taken quite a while for Simon to do. I'm not exactly sure how he's done it, to be honest, but I think it's fence posts that he's used. And they, that's actually how the footway gets across here. It's actually on raised pillars. But just look at the details going into the crossing and stuff. It's superb. And there isn't many more picturesque places in Britain to see trains than this, I don't think. It really is a stunning line. I'll wait down here and get a screenshot of it to uh, coming across this causeway. We're just a mile from Lou now. You can just see the town now opening up in front of us. We follow this line around on a little bit of a, one more curve and then the station's sort of on the curve just in front. 
Just around that headland. on the five mile an hour limit coming in and lose obviously a single platform station really minor little station but it's, it's sort of on the edge of town the town itself is right down there there's some beautiful beaches and stuff down there and we'll take a little look around this area when we've uh, stopped at the station There we are, we've arrived at Lou. Again, no custom signage added in here. Both sides of the hut. Shelter itself, obviously, as well as custom. But beyond that, it's just a beautiful setting. I love the watercolour as well, it's nice and turquoisey blue. Just like the real sort of colour is down this way in, in summer. Much better than the sort of dull looking colour. But yeah, I mean, even down here you've got like detail down in the town and stuff. Now all the boats and the bridge and everything's put in. It's really nice. Really, really well done. So again, this is always the Devon and Cornwall version 10. It's available now from Vulcan Productions and Alan Thompson Sim. Uh, created by the high speed ta high speed tracks team and thanks as always for watching guys appreciate your time don't forget to like subscribe comment always appreciate your feedback and support and tom's usually live on twitch it's usually live half seven wednesdays and fridays that's at twitch.tv forward slash trainsimtv underscore tom and thanks very much for watching guys see you later bye